um, or another way I like to think about it is it's a feeling of flow versus constipation. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> there, yeah, it's just like something, something's not right. Like it's like cloudy, it's constipated, it's not flowing versus like, oh. yeah. 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 And I notice it happens when uh, there is a mess. Like, you know, because mm-hmm. like, especially with kids, like they have so many toys and if like there, there is a place in the house where they just dump the toys, and they do, they don't even want to go there anymore because they dump their toys. <laughs> they don't want to play with those toys, and like I don't want to be there <laughs> either mm-hmm. in that part of the house because it's the energy is not moving. It's like it it, it just is dumped there. <laughs> also, like in the book, she talks about when energy is not flowing well, then the activities that would usually invigorate you will drag you down instead. And I, I feel this with running and walking. Um, so she's saying like, usually when you walk, just with the walk or run or exercise, like just with the movements, mm-hmm. it should stimulate your energy and mm-hmm. the meridians in the body in such a way that, you know, gives you more life. But some days you just feel kind of heavy. And um, like, if I go running like that, it, it just like makes me more tired instead of like, um, giving me that springy kind of feeling. So she says that when that happens, that means your energy is flowing backwards, like in the meridians, the 14 meridians in your body. Um, it could, it could mean that the energies are flowing in the reverse direction. So when you're going forward and doing all these things, you are going against that flow. Mm -hmm. So it tires you out, tires you out more. And, um, like when you go backwards, it actually (laughs) feels a little better. So is there a way to reverse the <clears throat> flow of the energy? Yeah, so so like the the exercises in the root energy routine, I think they're designed to do that do that very thing. Huh. So if for example you're running and you feel like it's draining you, if you do the exercise reverse the flow of the energy, it should help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think th- that's what she seems to be saying. Uh, especially tried- with the huh? Have you tried this? Reverse uh, flow. Yeah, I, I tried it with the K K twenty seven. Mm-hmm. I think that's the main one that uh, the three thumbs. Yeah. With the K twenty seven, like which is an inch below the collarbone, the tip of the collarbone, and a little bit to the to outside of that. Um, and then the sternum, mm-hmm. like the, just like tap or massage vigorously, and then the third one is the s- spleen points, um, like right underneath, directly below the nipples and like one rib down. So those three points are supposed to help you, um, help the energy flow in the right direction. Um, and, but then it, it, she says it also means that like when that happens, uh, it means your body wants you to rest. So <laughs> it's like maybe um, you, can, you can try the thumb thing and maybe it'll give you like an instant boost. But then <clears throat> to, in order to like fully restore the body, you should probably take the body's message and That's get some rest. That actually makes sense because you know that I am a runner, right? I, I used to run. Now I cannot run. Like I, like today, I uh, I went for a walk. I started running. It just it doesn't feel right. It didn't feel right. I stopped and I walked. Walking mm-hmm. feels right to me. Like it gives me the energy. Mm-hmm. It 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 um it sets my day. But running like I st- I, I ran just one block and it drained me. <laughs> mm. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. if, uh, if I, on this time I'll try to, to reverse the energy and see if it helps or maybe, maybe the mm-hmm. body just needs walking right now. Mm-hmm. No yeah, but yeah, like definitely your body knows when, like there are those days when you feel just like, uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this today. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is interesting because usually when people have, when we have like an exercise regimen, we don't really take that into consideration. Mm. It's like one size fits all, right? Like you should do this many reps, like this day, this many minutes of running, blah, blah, blah. 
so I think it's it's really important to like tune into each person's yeah and if you don't do that body. then you think of yourself or oh, I'm lazy or I don't want to mm -hmm. be doing this yeah mm -hmm. and they're just saying like push through <laughs> yeah exactly yeah I think sometimes push through is good but then there are times like where it's like it really doesn't feel right mm -hmm. so I think you should follow that um I wonder if it also has to do with like menstrual cycle and where you are yeah cycle. yeah definitely during the period like I, I don't want to run like it just feels bad um and I think in in like the middle of the period when like maybe like approaching ovulation, mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm much more likely to be like engaged in things and energetic. Yeah, and then it goes down because yeah. the period you go inward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already mentioned somewhere that um, <clears throat> the closer to the period I am, the more insights I get. Insights, yeah. Insights, yeah, like mm -hmm. or or understanding of something or mm -hmm. yeah, or nice. just the, the reflection. I'm like in the reflection state. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, like during the period or like approaching right that or right before the period, like maybe a couple of days, like three three days before the period, and then the first one two days of the period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like in a shower, you know, like when you're in the shower, like you have these bright ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so similar to that. Mm -hmm. But but in the shower, it's more like I'm finding more like a solution to something. And right before the period, it's more of a reflection, reflection. or insight or something like, oh, okay, now I know why something mm -hmm. Or, oh, now I know why I like this, or I don't like this, or I want to do this, or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this lady that I follow, sort of, on online. <laughs> um, she, she has a lot of info about, like, women's cycles and, like, the psychology and the spiritual meaning of all the different phases. And so like right before the period would be like the fall or autumn phase, according to her kind of framework. So it's, it's kind of like when things are dying down. So it, it feels very reflective too, right? In, in the autumn phase. Yes, yeah, so like preparing um, for hibernation mm -hmm. for death, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then during the winter, which is the period pay phase, mm -hmm. that's when you kind of dream up dream up new ideas for the next cycle. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the seeds, seeds are all like sleeping and they're dreaming before they germinate in the spring. So I thought that was a really beautiful way to look at it. But it kind of makes sense too with the energy levels. It's like in the winter, it's like low energy. Mm -hmm. Everything's static relatively. Yeah, and then the spring comes mm -hmm. and then the summer, the peak. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of brilliant ideas and different corners of the room, I had an interesting experience a few years ago where I, I was working on a project, like a music project. And like I was on my computer at my desk, you know, trying out different ideas and <clears throat> it wasn't really like flowing. It felt like that constipation thing <laughs> in, my, in my brain. <laughs> and then, okay, I was like, okay, I give up. And then I just went and like sat down on the floor um, in this like corner that I never sat at before. And then it just physically looked different, like a new perspective, literally, mm -hmm. because um, it, like I'd never sat there before. And then I just kind of zoned out there for a bit. And then this like, really awesome idea came in and I was like whoa and then I started doing stuff and then it became like a new piece and so I think there is something about different places um and how how you relate to that place and or maybe it was just like that new perspective but uh yeah it's uh but it was an exchange 
exchange? It wasn't, yeah, exchange of information between the place and you. That's true, yeah. So like when you were sitting at the desk or a piano, like um, there was no exchange, like you're saying, constipation, mm -hmm. right? The, yeah. the things were not moving, but then you moved to the floor yeah. and your exchange was like, you saw a different picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Exchange of, yeah. I like that the way of saying it, exchange. Yeah, because the, 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 the uh, well, where my shift in uh, me is happening that uh, the things are not just the things, you know, but mm -hmm. they, like a pen is not just a pen, but uh, like we exchange information, like, right? So the pen gives me something and I give something to the pen. Mm -hmm. And in that way, now I understand why they're saying that everything is alive around us, even if it's not breathing, but the things, they, they can be alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it goes and back to... That's, yeah, so, sorry, it just a final thought. That mm -hmm. Maybe that's what um, Marie Kondo meant. Like, you know, when you take a thing, it gives you information and you feel like, wow, I want to mm -hmm. keep it. That's, that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. Right, and if the thing doesn't, if there is no exchange, then you don't want to keep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's always a relating, right? Like two-way street yes. between you and this other perceived other thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it goes back to the sea of energy, lattice work of energy idea, mm -hmm. right? That Donna Eden talks about, and um, and. Also in, in this book, Cell, Cell Talk, um, the little anecdote that I shared, this book, Cell Talk, mm -hmm. well, it's, it's flipped, but. Wow, it's a thick book. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big one, yeah, it's like a textbook. Um, so the tagline is transmitting mind into DNA. And um, it's written by a guy who founded, who I guess, discovered, founded the craniosacral therapy, which is like a type of body work slash energy work where you work with the energies um, around the, the, the head. Okay. Um, anyway, so in, in his book, um, he talks a lot about like energy and consciousness and uh, like he actually like says that he can talk, like he can receive information from the different parts of the body. That's how he works with his clients. Um, is that like it's, he gets into this like meditative state, and then he has sections where he actually like talked to like the different body parts, like organs and different systems in the body, and like got information um, about like what they're what what's you know what's going on, like why why are there these symptoms, things like that. Um, which is really amazing. <laughs> um, and it goes with that like information idea. Um, but one of the really interesting anecdotes that he cites is um, about this boy who, he, who had some kind of paralysis or something and he was treating, treating him. And then he said he was walking in the forest with his mom one day and he was like uh like mommy like what if we go west from here like where do we like what what is west from here and then she was like oh yeah that would be vancouver and then and then he was like oh yeah i've been there when i was in auntie's belly and then it turned out like be way before he was born like um the mom's sister so that aunt had a baby that she miscarried and that was like 20 years ago and she's she'd never like told his son about that incident but then he was like oh yeah like I remember Vancouver from being in Aunt Connie's stomach and then um and um and then there's like other stories about people who go to like the hypno therapy and then they they explain about like past events that they couldn't have like known about but then they they guess like the right tombstone in the right place like for the right person that they don't know about but then maybe like 
through the past life experience, they like, they're able to like con convey their information. Mm -hmm. So, so he has like a lot of anecdotes about these things and it's just makes you wonder. Um, so like he theorizes that like there's information at all times, like we always have access to all information mm -hmm. in the universe. It's a matter of tuning into the right ones. So like maybe with some people, for whatever reason, you have that connection to that other person that lived like 100 years ago, and then you can, you can tap into that memory or that information somehow. But does he say how to train, how, like, how to tap? Uh, well, I don't know, like not in the section. He was just like, he was just telling the stories. Um, but I guess like there's methods like the, the hypnotherapy. Oh, God. And I know people do these like past life experience. Yeah. So you need to turn up your mind again, right? I would, I would imagine so. Yeah. And like in the case of the little boy, like he was a kid and probably like a lot more open to yeah. receiving this kind of information, right? Without the mind. Yeah. Did he talk about the, uh, the relationship between the boy and the aunt? Like how, like if he, the boy knew that he was in the aunt's belly, like the, I wonder what was the relationship between them? Um, yeah, it doesn't say. Um, but it seems like it was, you know, like a lot of love and like maybe mm -hmm. sadness. Like he was worried about the aunt. Oh, okay. So and there was sadness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can <laughs> talk about my um, youngest daughter. She's five now, but since she started talking, she has this idea that when she grows up, she will grow down like at some point like she she know like nobody told her she came up with this by herself like it's her own thing like she always tells me that mom I will grow up and then I will grow down and go back into your belly oh wow <laughs> first time when she said that to me like I wasn't doing much work you know this type of work so I was like uh, it's like you know, a movie what's Benjamin Button if you watch it yeah, yeah, but now I'm thinking that maybe it is reincarnation. You know, maybe she like somehow she knows that. I don't mm -hmm. know where she, how she knows or where she knows it from. But she knows that like, she's 100% sure that when she grows up, then she will start growing down and going back into my belly. Like oh, going wow. back into the baby. Like she knows that she will be a baby again. Mm. Oh, that just gave me like chills. <laughs> <laughs> interesting it's interesting because it's not talking about the past it's talking about the future mm -hmm. right and it's also interesting because like she doesn't talk about like okay has she done it before but she knows that she's gonna do it 